Okay, here we are at Titan Machine Tool today. We're gonna be making these parts that you've seen earlier in another video, or maybe you didn't see it in the other video, but whatever. If you didn't, go look, you can check it out. But anyways, we're gonna be making square parts into round parts. I got these series of parts here. They're, they're the same, but they're all a little different. But anyways, we made them out of plate stock. We put extra holes in, tooling holes, so that we could screw them down. We got it screwed down to the plate. Now we're gonna make them round. Tool's gonna come in, middle of the arc. First pass, come around, do it again, semi-finished pass, then it's gonna come around, do it again, finish pass. Then I'm gonna put two clamps over here, and then we're gonna cut the other half. Same thing, rough cut, semi-finished cut, finish cut. That's what we'll do. I got a little clamp that I'm gonna put in the middle as well. Right there, just to keep the center from flopping when the tool comes around and cuts through the solid material. Now, ideally, if I had, say another hole in this thing someplace, a full hole, we got one here, but half of that's going away. We're gonna be milling over there, so we can't use that. If I had something else, another feature like a dowel hole or a screw hole or whatever that I could use to lock this plate to keep it from rotating, I could do the entire part just holding it down with this one clamp right here. But I have no feature in these slots. They're all in different Y locations. They're all different from piece to piece. So I couldn't put a couple dowels in there and utilize that feature. So. After, that's why I'm doing it half and half. We'll cut half of it away. I'll put two clamps down, then we'll cut the other half away. There's nothing to keep it from spinning. If there was something that I could put in there to keep it from spinning that worked on all of them, because like I said, they're all a little different and the outside's the same on all of them, so I'm gonna use the same process. They all had holes in them like that. So I need something to keep it from rotating when I, when I machine around it. I, I don't have that feature. So I'm gonna put these guys on it on the back side after I mill the first half away. So that's what we got here. We got our program over here. We're all queued up over here. It's gonna call out the tool diameter. It's gonna do the first roughing arc. It's gonna come back. It's gonna do the finish, rough, the finish profile pass, but the contour has a 10 thousandths finish cut in it. So this is gonna be two cuts over here. And then I got a position drill, just gets out of the way. Rapids way back up here to get away from the part. And then I put a comment in, in the comment. So when I get to that point, what's it gonna say? It's gonna tell me, move clamps. So that's, after I cut the first half, it gets out of the way, I put the clamps on it, I mill the second half. And I put that comment in there twice, see? Just to make sure you don't wanna get distracted and just start clicking away and just keep clicking and clicking and not paying attention then it goes to middle of the second half and it doesn't work out as you wanted it to but anyways here we go i'll put cue this program back up turn my spindle on i'm going like 2000 rpms I'm gonna go a little faster on this guy right here i think i'm like roughing it at like five inches a minute we'll see sorry keep you on focus here turn on my spray mist Make sure that stuff's flowing nice. Go. Moves into position. Keep the spray mist on it nice. Helps clear the chips in addition to keeping the tool cool. You don't want her getting hot. If it gets hot, the aluminum chips tend to want to stick to the piece. I mean to the end mill. They tend to want to stick to the tool if they get hot. So the spray mist helps in that. I'm moving seven and a half inches a minute. Oh, so we're flying today compared to what I usually do. Quarter inch fourth loop solid carbide end mill. 
OSG brand, made in USA. And then as it exits the pot, part, as it comes off the pot, there's a, uh, the contour has a little ramp off feature there. So it's got a little three quarter inch arc it does to ramp off the part. Has the same thing at the beginning too to ramp onto the part, onto the part. So that is now separated. These two pieces are separated from each other. We milled all the way through. Now we're going to take another roughing pass here, a semi-finished pass. The part finishes at uh, five and a half inch diameter, so that's 2.750 radius. The first arc that I swung through there, the roughing pass was at a 2.8 radius, so I left 50, 50 on the side. And this is programmed to the finished profile at the 2.750 radius. However, I have the contour feature leaving 10 thousandths. Maybe five. I think it's five thousandths for a finished cut. We're moving at 10 inches a minute on this one. We could go a little faster because we weren't cutting through solid material. We'll probably still go a lot faster than I'm moving. Play the chips. So this is a finished pass. Sorry, I can't hold the camera steady. So we'll turn the spray off. This thing just position drills way up over there to some arbitrary number just to get out of the way. So half that round is now done. So I gotta take these guys off. Bear with me here working with one hand. Take them out of the way. I really, if I did the whole pot with one one arc, I wouldn't have to move them. But I have to move them to get them out of the way because I need to get to that tap hole. I use that tap hole to pinch this down. It probably wouldn't rotate. I probably could hold it just with that one if I crank down on it hard enough. But what's the big deal? If I was doing 5,000 of them, I might want to uh, hold it down with a different way to not have to manually take all these screws in and out. I'm only doing a couple of them. So now I, need, I had to take that side off, same deal, to get to that tapped hole right there. It doesn't take much. Tiny little bit of hold down is going to keep them from going anywhere. They probably wouldn't go anywhere to begin with. So now the program is basically going to go back and run the same thing. Oh, there's my comments, okay? It says, oh, move clamps. Did you move the clamps? Yeah, I moved the clamps. Uh, are you sure you moved the clamps? Yeah, I'm sure I moved the clamps. All right, get back to cutting. 
So now we're coming on this side. And I, I usually always climb milk. So that's why we're on this side of the park. Because we're gonna climb milk. So the graphics are nice, the feature on the screen, the graphics, because when I went to position for these holes right here, I could see where they were on the screen in, in relation to the material that was going away and the material that was staying. That was actually the part versus the square corners being removed. Play some chips. separated from the disc that's going to be the finished piece. Take a finished pass, 5,000 per side. Well, it's only cut now one side, so 5,000. That happens when I go dirt bike riding on the camera, the helmet cam. Guys in front of me splash me with mud. Alright, so it gets out of the way. Now that all of this material is removed and there's nothing coming off pretty much on that diameter because it's been cut to size, I have one more. One more step that it does. I take all the clamps away. And I run around the entire piece with one arc. Starting from there. Because there's no dwell or no overlap mark. Because the material's removed. 
When you reach the uh, 90 degree quadrants, and the two axes basically come to a stall as they're changing direct, as they're coming in one way and they go to change direction, they leave like a little dwell mark. Sometimes, maybe you can see it. I don't know. This one cleaned up pretty good, but nonetheless, the tool's gonna come back in, it's gonna come down, and it's gonna run around the entire pot just like that. You can see that little arc maneuver that it does right there for the contour. Comes in, does the arc, ramps in, goes around, comes out, arcs off. And I changed the tool diameter by 1,000. So that it takes almost like a little finished pass going around. The tolerance is uh, plus five minus 10. So I'd rather run it on the, a little bit on the smaller side than the bigger side. And that guy's running around just basically taking another thousandth off. And because it's taken no material, practically no material at all, I feel comfortable holding it just with this one plant. But those first roughing passes, I suppose I could have roughed it, roughed it. And then took the clamps off and just took one finished pass like this. You can see it on the screen as it's going around. Five and a half inch diameter disc. Started with the square, machined it round. It can make rounds out of squares, but you can't make squares out of rounds. So I told you this was a long one. It's almost 18 minutes. So that's it, Titan machine tool, making squares into rounds today. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day or whatever you're doing. Sayonara.